Please ignore my plushies. Hi, my name is Aiden Smiley, and I'm here to tell you about last semester, where I, along with a 17-person design team, went through absolute hell to bring a boat into reality. And rest assured, this journey is fraught with twists, turns, sweat, tears, and lots of money at the bottom of a lake. The pitch was simple. A client had approached the school asking for a full design task force to redesign and relaunch their brand of foot-propelled fishing vessels for both a full-fledged pitch on Kickstarter and experiential learning credit for the whole of us. We spoke with Greg, the client, early into the process and tried to figure out immediately exactly what it was he wanted from us. Because in industrial design, those guide rails are not put in place for you. Half the job is figuring out what your job is. Greg's brand, Adventure Designs, had an intriguing concept that seemed to flounder when pitched to market. The flagship product, the Trident Explorer Water craft was a made-to-order fishing vessel fitted with a proprietary foot propulsion system, which allows for simultaneous fishing and navigation. And while the concept is certainly novel, it seems like in other ways the novelty may have worked in reverse. The form seems to split the difference between kayak and paddle boat, and unfortunately, it wasn't finding much market success in either space, at least as far as brick and mortar stores are concerned. Meanwhile, online sales were significantly more popular, but the unorthodox form as well as the online presence being lackluster led to the boat being the target of ridicule on the internet. The watercraft also found popular popularity in users ages 45 to 60 despite the fact that Greg was aiming for a demographic considerably younger. It was clear Adventure Designs needed a tune-up, and that's why they came to us. By the way, if none of that meant anything to you, you're not alone. Most of us had never even been fishing, let alone know the ins and outs of the fishing kayak world. I gotta be honest, I didn't know a bow from a stern from a hole from a unibody, length from a depth from a rocker to a beam, and tracking. Where I'm from, this is tracking. And so the only way to learn was to do it for real. Unsure of even whether we were retooling the current boat or making a new one entirely, we hit the water. And that was our first mistake. <laughs> That's right, in pursuit of science, we all had a beach day. We have fun here. To the beach, we brought the Trident Explorer, as well as a kayak for control, and pitted up against each other in a trial of dexterity. We tested maintaining one's position, navigating a slalom, fishing, and even... Oh, look at that, Carter's playing Celeste. Serve as a fishing platform and as something to stand on. We were, of course, safe as could possibly be during this test. One person on the water at a time in a full life jacket in a roped off area, no more than six feet deep at any given point, and you only had to test it out if you felt comfortable. And me personally, I'm terrified of water. So you know I didn't touch the darn things. Now the kayak, due to its lightweight, slim size, and eyelid shape, was exceptional at all things dexterity, though it was pushed around the water pretty easily. And on the other side of that, the Trident Explorer was considerably harder to control than even we expected. <laughs> now granted, once you got in the rhythm of pedaling it like a bike, all of a sudden it became significantly more doable. A lot of the marketing in the past had been taking this thing to expos and then having people try it. And so first impressions people were getting from it weren't exactly flattering. And while people did lament the lack of infrastructure on the kayak for navigating with a paddle and a fishing pole at the same time, authentic fishing kayaks have holsters to accommodate this sort of struggle. The one thing the Trident really stood for though was its stability. Our faith in which, ironically enough, wound up being our first oopsie. We were totally fine, but the equipment we were intentionally putting through its paces was not. In trying to stress test the Trident Explorer, one of our team members, uh, Lance, his Trident test was the last test of the whole day. Lord have mercy, he was fishing like a man possessed. And after scaring away every catfish for seven miles, Lance picked up the foot paddle, because the foot paddle detaches from its holster, and the thing is stable enough you can stand up and paddle like a gondola. But I guess the fishing pole was so insulted by its rough treatment that it proceeded to abandon ship. And, um, I'll just let the clip speak for itself. <laughs> Oh no, the paddle is the paddle's Duncan. Oh no, and the paddle does not float. Ugh. <laughs> I think my favorite part of that whole clip is 10 seconds after that paddle has been swallowed by the abyss, and the professor just says, Don't lose that paddle. Like, my god, it's too late. <laughs> now, it didn't take long before that paddle was deemed completely lost to time. We took meetings with Greg, trying to find a way to break the news to him, that we had significantly devalued his $3,000 baby. And I'm not sure when exactly he found out, but if I had to hazard a guess, it would be sometime before this picture was taken. I went back home with our shoulders sagging, and the class budget almost completely expired. So things were going great. We are sorry, but these things happen. That's a part of design, alright? Making mistakes and learning from them. And with that, we had our first definite tenet of our philosophy. 
the paddle should float. So we immediately got to work evaluating the vestiges of our operation and put together video ethnographies. It's essentially an easily digestible two minute cut of what was about 10 hours of continuous video. And as somebody who was too chicken to use either of the boats, it was about time that I made myself useful. Here's some choice clips that I think demonstrate our takeaways pretty solidly. Hello, this is Craig Mitchell. Hello, my name is Kaylin Thompson. We're... Hello, my name is Emma Lentz. Just the overall use of this new product is kind of awkward just getting used to it. Trying to navigate that in be confident in what you're doing is kind of difficult. I just think it's because it weighs so much overall, especially with the wind today. It felt like I was always drifting to the left and hitting the buoys. How would you rate your boating experience overall? I would say about a two, maybe a three. I'd say maybe like a four. Um, probably like a six. So with all that info wrapped up in a couple of nice bullet points, from there, two main questions came to light. This a remake? or a sequel. And ultimately due to price point, marketability, and the obvious benefits of the kayak we saw in person, a kayakified trident was the way to go. We spoke again to Greg confident in our conclusions, only to find that he had actually come to some of his own. He was starting to try to distance us from the idea of the foot paddle, because he thought it would be a bridge too far if we were trying to market this thing as a kayak. This divided us considerably, about half wanted to keep the paddle, about half wanted to get rid of it. We decided to table that discussion and instead focus on form. Now the trident's most impressive feature to us was its stability, and we wanted to preserve that level of stability and comfort on our final design. We decided to test out Outriggers. We bought a new kayak, a sit atop one this time, which is more reminiscent of the likes of a fishing kayak, and got to work. We tooled four pairs of Outriggers and took them back on the lake, and once again, there were issues. We thought for what is essentially a six foot two blown plastic tube, a 70 kilogram weight limit was frankly absurd. <laughs> Come back! Come back! Look at <laughs> If anything, 70 was generous. It was the end of September, the water was roughly 35 degrees, and unless you were Creighton, you were gonna get wet. Now the outriggers themselves actually increased the buoyancy by quite a bit, so it seemed like as long as the outriggers were both stable, they would provide ample stability. We took the results of our outrigger test to Greg, who actually loved the idea. Kayak outriggers are certainly a thing, and they usually look pretty dumb, which is why our sleeker designs appealed to him in a big way. His only concern was speed, which does suffer wound up actually being a silver lining in the future. So with the green light on that, it was now time to deal with the elephant that had vacated the room. <laughs> And besides adding an elastic cord to keep it taped to the boat, we got a new paddle, rigged ourselves a new prototype model, and tried humoring the foot paddle one last time. We came up with four types of foot straps and got to work. Back on the lake a third time, and we got those currents churning. I feel like I'm actually paddling the wind. Just grabbed it with the tail. <laughs> and we're surprised and honestly delighted to find the custom seat we got, the custom rig we got, and the different angle you're seated at when on a kayak as opposed to on the Trident watercraft. People actually on the kayak corroborated that it was a joyful experience and one that was surprisingly not tiring or strenuous, little more than pedaling an actual bike. Plus, your hands are free. All of a sudden feeling great about the foot pedal, we decided to come to Greg with another video ethnography, showing that this idea actually has a lot of merit. And again, here's some choice clips from that. What's up? It's your boy, Lucas Tatson. Hello, this is Craig Mitchell. and Philip Swanson again. Paddling with the feet in the kayak was way easier than on the trident. Paddling with your feet is really a strong thing to have. My feet were secure and I could even pull a little bit on the pedal if I to. Having to keep your ball on your feet or like wrap your toes over the paddle was less than comfortable. So somewhere more closer to the middle of your foot or even slightly back to the heel. Greg jumped right on the idea. He said he loved it. Following that level of praise, we began sketching. Like it's our job. In large part because that's the idea, but also because in sketching and sharing sketches we explore as many possibilities as possible, while also cross-pollinating ideas. Like maybe I have a really solid idea for form, but I don't know what the heck I should do about the paddle that's at the bottom of the lake. And in that case, Emma's got my back. And together, we have a fully-fledged idea, which more than likely will be burned. Again, most of design is failure. In earnest, most of your ideas probably suck, but you keep trying, because eventually, one of your ideas won't suck. It's again, the Trident Explorer's big strength is its stability, but its big weakness is difficulty when trying to navigate. As for how to incorporate the outriggers, though, we defaulted to the age-old adage, when faced with a difficult this or that choice, don't make one someone eventually had the idea they should shift, effectively changing the shape of the kayak mid-voyage, giving it a speed mode and a stability mode, so anglers everywhere don't have to compromise on their boats. And that idea was met with uproarious praise. A bit more sketching and we had ourselves a design.
And so now the game shifts again. How are we gonna build this thing in an impressive enough state for a Kickstarter promo? And because of how long we spent researching this thing and making sure we got it all right, the answer to that question was very quickly. The plan was to entomb the blue kayak in a prison of spray foam that we'd then sand down to size, entombing it in paper mache and then painting over all that, and put on a green screen to transport it to the water. Yep, not in a real lake, because apparently spray paint in a water reservoir is a bad thing. And all the while, all my friends are preemptively thanking me for being there to fix their mistakes in post. And I was more than happy to oblige. So with ever piling existential dread on my part, three weeks till finals, and basically a giant pinata, we got a filmin'. So we got a big old green screen, a bunch of film cameras, a bunch of props and set dressing, and quickly turned the building's paint booth into a veritable production studio. And like any film set, of course, there were about a quadrillion oopsies. The professor brought his drone and proceeded to fly it through a network of overhead pipes to get our footage from overhead. And for the most part, he did a great job. <laughs> For the most part. Now, I don't know what was in that pipe, but the blades cut straight through the insulation. That's the last oopsie, thankfully. The storyboards we did write needed rewrite after rewrite, and the footage we had didn't even necessarily lend itself to what we had planned. But because of things like motion blur, and camera shaking, and things like the paddle leaving the green screen, plus the fact that keying something on water is the hardest possible surface to key something onto, as the video guy, the professor and I, this became our problem. And December is, of course, a hell of a month to pick for filming a boat video. I'm like oh, shivering all in the camera. <laughs> what I can. Design is my passion as much as it is my waking nightmare. And while the beta footage from me is solidly embarrassing, it took lots of quick thinking and determination to get this thing made, period. And despite the limitations, I truly am proud of what we came up with and the presentation of our final. While I handled video, others handled the website redesign, continued work on renders, Kickstarter pitching, and some delicious buttery VO. Hi. We're Adventure Designs, and we are seeking your support in launching our newest watercraft, the Trident Kayak. We overcame ridiculous and oftentimes hilarious odds, <clears throat> and I feel like in the end we delivered something that is truly worthy of praise. This sponsored studio, while it definitely gave me the biggest migraines I've ever had as a design student, through trust in our methodologies we were taught, as well as having trust in each other, we managed to come together and make something which turned out way better than I had even dreamed it could. Of course, I would never call it perfect, but if there were a perfect boat, there would only be one boat. I guess I'll leave you with the Kickstarter video itself. Stay in vegetables, eat your school, and don't go looking for that paddle, you'll never find it. God, I love my blinds.